It's cold out here. Could I heat this garage with my propane burner? Probably. Can I do it safely? No. No way. Definitely not safe. Uh, for many reasons. But that got me thinking. Uh, there's, there's a few different ways that running a burner out here would be very unsafe. Uh, the main one is a huge flame that's uncontrollable and hot as the sun. That's, that's probably the biggest reason why it's unsafe and why there's no way I'm going to do it. Uh, but there's another problem with burning anything ever, and that's carbon monoxide. And that's something I can actually check uh, using this nifty device that you may have heard beeping already. This is a carbon monoxide detector. This isn't mine. I, I took it from work. Don't tell my boss. Just kidding. He dropped this off today exactly so I could do this test. But what this does is it, it sniffs the air and it gives you a readout, readout on here in parts per million. So anything above zero, it starts beeping more annoyingly and it gets more and more annoying until it hits 200 parts per million and this thing starts screaming. We use this to uh, a lot of times to check ovens, like gas ovens in your home. Uh, they'll, they'll put out some carbon monoxide, especially during preheat before they warm up, uh, but then it, then it calms down. And we do this anytime we suspect there might be a, a carbon monoxide problem because we do not want anyone to get carbon monoxide poisoning. It is bad stuff. But I'm going to use this to test my burner to see just how much carbon monoxide it puts off. Should be interesting, right? I should reiterate, do not do this at home. Don't burn anything inside your house, uh, even if you have one of these. And if you're going to buy a carbon monoxide detector, buy a real one. Buy it. This is a fluke some kind of thing. And I don't mean buy a fluke on eBay, because that'll be like, oh look, it's really cheap and it's new in the box. Well, guess what? That's a Chinese counterfeit. It's not a real meter. Uh, buy it from like a real place, not eBay. Okay, tangent, tangent. I, I have three things we're going to test right now. First up, I have this lighter here. It's got a, a flexy neck on it, but I use it for like starting grills and stuff. I use it to light the burner. So here we go. Click. Burner, this is the sniffer part, so you kind of get that where the air is going, right? You don't want to get the flame like on it though, because it's this, these are expensive and it's plastic and I don't want it melting. But let's, ooh, ooh, wait, this has a hold, this will hold the maximum reading that I get. Here, the beep is right, probably where the air is rising above the flame. There we go, 40, 40 parts per million. Do not melt these, they're, they're very expensive. I will continue trying not to melt it with my plumber's torch. Wait, wait, I gotta I got clear this first. Hang on. Okay, here, here we go. Alright, you hear... Well, you may not have heard it over this. But it was beeping kind of quick, and then it stopped beeping quite so quick. Probably as this heated up. We see that with ovens, too. They're, they're much worse before they heat up. And there we go. 36 parts per million max with that, uh, that burner over there. Now we're gonna check the big burner. That's it, we don't need a light. Now what you can't see here, it looks like it's just clamped in the vise, and that's true. But there's a cone, the way it's clamped, it's kind of difficult to tell on the camera. Imagine a cone coming out of here that's quite wide, maybe 60 degree cone, with nothing in it for like 12 feet. So we're pretty much away from anything combustible or just in the way in general. There's nothing out here. And when this is burning at full blast death mode, you can have the flame shooting out and stand here and not feel any heat. It's really quite amazing. You don't feel any heat until you get downwind of the burner, and then you can feel the air that's coming off it is a lot hotter. It's, it's strange. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. If I close all the air holes and the flame goes yellow, which is a terrible, sooty, dirty flame, then you can feel radiant heat. I don't know why. I'm sure someone in the comments will tell me why. Hair dryer sounds terrible. I think the bearings are going. While I'm getting this lit, I would like to mention again, do not try this at home. Say max and hold. Let's feel... Okay, here's the airflow. I'm going to hold it right in the, the path of very hot air. If there's any, any air coming out, it's going over this. Oh man, that is toasty. Wow, it looks like I'm burning cardboard, but I promise you that's not in the way. Look at this. This is what I mean by there's no radiant heat. There's the fire. 
Check out my hand. I'm like four inches away from it, I don't feel the fire. I don't feel much heat, I mean. And also notice how short the visible part of the flame is. It's really just right here. This part here, I cannot see if I turn the light on. It's all right there, very condensed. So more of this, remember, this is on max and hold. So as it finds any CO, the parts per million meter goes up and it holds it where it is. So that's burning my hand. I'm gonna call it there. There you have it. Wanna see the reading? Where's, there it is, beeping. Not going to believe it. Focus. Believe that. Zero. Zero parts per million max. Oh, oh, what's that? Six. Why did it suddenly go six? Is my camera putting off CO? That's not good. Okay, that happened long after I shut the thing off, but we'll go with six. How's that for a reading? Okay, so a little more about this test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off because that's annoying. While it was running, I didn't just hold this in one spot. I held this in a bunch of different areas, kind of as close to the burner as my, my hand would let me because I was using ungloved hand. So I figure if it doesn't burn my hand, it's not gonna, not gonna hurt this. I also had it kind of over here. I walked, I adjusted the camera, all while holding this. So I was moving around inside the garage with the thing running. And also, I have one of these laser thermometers kind of beeping around. It's about 35 degrees on the floor. The ceiling here, which was the same, about 35, is now 60. The air is kind of rising, uh, but I have a hole in the ceiling over there, so all my hot air is escaping. So I'm going to have to patch that, and then I'm, I'm going to get like a normal store-bought electric heater for out here, because that's going to be quite a bit safer. Also, a side effect of that, uh, propane, when it burns, when it burns cleanly, if there's enough propane and oxygen, you will get no CO, no carbon monoxide, but you will get water vapor. And, uh, and what that does, you get a lot of hot air, full of water vapor, and you have cold metal everywhere. You'll get condensation if, you heat, if I heat with that thing. So all of this exposed steel everywhere uh, will turn into rust very quickly. So yeah, don't heat your garage with flamethrowers. I probably wouldn't suggest doing any foundry stuff indoors ever for any reason, regardless of your, your, your heat source. Get carbon monoxide detectors and alarms for your house, by the way. Not one of these. This is a tool. But like the ones I put on the wall, because like carbon monoxide will literally kill people. So uh, yeah, don't want that to happen. If it doesn't kill you, it can still seriously mess you up. So get a detector. Get a lot of detectors. You probably already have them in your house because they're like the law and stuff. But do it anyway. Get more of them. Don't light open flames in your house, please. This is like the fourth time I'm going to say this. Only you can prevent forest fires and garage fires. Come to think of it, I got oil all over the floor. That probably was dumb. I, this is this is for science. Science. See, look, coat. Past my waist, all down to my knees like a lab coat. Just, just pretend it's white and cotton. I'm rambling, aren't I? I'm going to end this video. See ya!